Open main.storyboard inside Interface Builder, go to the Object Library, and drag out an image view. This is where we'll do all our drawing. I'll drag this thing so it starts in the top left corner and ends in the bottom right corner. It takes up the full available space in our view. Next, we'll add a button on top that we can cause to redraw core graphic stuff every time in that image view. So back in the Object Library, I'll look for a button. And I'll drag this thing out onto the view controller. And I'll make sure it's centered like that so it snaps in the middle. But also, I want to put it at the bottom. So you see a line appears there. That's the end of our safe area. So it's centered horizontally and bottom against the bottom of the safe area like that. This thing, I'll give the title Redraw. Like that. Now we're going to have IB do all the auto layout constraints for us. I'll go to the editor menu, choose resolve auto layout issues, and under all views in view controller, I'll choose reset to suggested constraints, like that. And you'll see that our redraw button uh, is aligned to the bottom of the safe area directly and centered X, just like we asked for. And our image view is pinned, uh, trailing, leading, bottom and top. So it's across the board, filling the whole view. We're going to need to reference that image view in code. So I'll switch to Assistant Editor now. And I'll create an outlet for this thing uh, down here. I'll control drag and say, you are called image view. And press connect. As for an action for the button, when that's tapped, I'll control drag from redraw down to some space below view did load. I'll call this action redraw tapped like that. Now, Switch back to the standard editor, open up viewcontrol.swift. Because our UI is done, the rest is all in code. We're going to use a similar code structure to Project 15, a property that we increment through using a switch case to call different methods each time. In addition, we need viewDidLoad to call an initial method, so we start by drawing something. So I'll hide this bar on the right, then add our property we'll cycle through. I'll say in here, var current draw type is zero. So start with the first kind of drawing. And now we'll add an empty method that we'll call shortly. I'll say func draw rectangle. Open and close. An empty method will fill in shortly. As with project 15, the button we place needs to add one to our property, current draw type, wrapping it back to zero when it reaches a certain point. The property is then used to decide what method to call, although right now we're only going to have one useful case, which is draw rectangle. So let's go ahead and fill in redraw tapped. We'll add some more cases over time, but this is enough for now. We'll say current draw type plus equals one. If current draw type is greater than five, current draw type is zero. And that's the wrapping code. Once we're past five, put it back to zero again. Now we'll call different methods based on the values of current draw type. We'll say switch current draw type Case zero, our first type, we'll call draw rectangle. And for all other cases, default, we'll just break out like that. Then end the switch and end that. So right now it'll call draw rectangle and nothing else. The only remaining step to make our sandbox complete is to have view did load call the draw rectangle method so the screen starts by showing something. So up here in view did load, I'll go ahead and add a call to draw rectangle like that. Now running up at this point, we'll do very little. I can go up here, choose an iPad Air third generation and press Command R, but it'll do nothing at all. Because although the UI works, the code does effectively nothing. We're gonna fix that by filling in the draw rectangle method, then proceed to add more cases to the switch case block. 